All right, so I want to look at some key comic books, kind of. I want to look at comic books that are key appearances to some collectors, but not others. It's going to be confusing. Yes. A little bit. Bear with us. Let's let's just jump it right into it, okay? The first thing I want to talk about is release dates. Let's talk about the release date of Hulk 181. Sure. November 1974. November 1974 actually had other comic books released along that same month. There were three other comic books that I want to bring up to the community that are special for this reason because they came out in November of 1974. The first one is Thor 229. Also, Iron Fist, number 19. And then, of course, you have Daredevil, issue 115. All three of these issues have an ad for Hulk 181 in the comic book. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about advertisements for key comic books and whether or not those advertisements make the comic that they're in a key book. Hmm. I guess it depends on your definition of key. Right? A lot of things could be listed as a key appearance. And to be honest, I default to the collector. It's to the collector's opinion if a book is a sure. key appearance because it's what makes them special. I mean, there are thousands upon thousands and thousands of comic books. And yes, yeah, sometimes there is a first appearance, but we also argue about first appearances all the time. So choosing which is a key and which is not, it's really up to the collector. And these books right here are actually key books, but if you look online, you're only going to see them being sold for the most part because of either grade or because of that promo that's in there that's listing that advertisement for the first appearance of Wolverine. I can see that. If you're a really, really big fan of Wolverine, it's kind of it's kind of almost more interesting. Like the obvious choice is Hulk 181. Or 180 or something. Right? Like that. Yeah, something something the clear, the clear obvious choice, but a kind of cooler piece of trivia almost is to say like actually you know this is like the advertisement for that issue technically this is the first appearance of that of that comic it's it's kind of it's kind of a cool idea and these key appearances are largely cheaper typically than the first full appearance that the community has deemed worthy and it got me thinking advertisements and other promotional items that cause these, what we like to call real first appearances on the show. I want to move on and talk about some other promo items, if you don't mind. Like sea monkeys? Like sea monkeys. No, no, actually, I'm not talking about sea monkeys. I'm talking about um, actual monkeys you can buy. No, 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 actually, I'm not even talking about that, because those are things that are advertisements that are in some comic books. All right. No, 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 I'm not talking about buying monkeys. I'm talking about your ability to buy an up-and-coming comic book in a month called Booster Gold Number 1. So obviously, you're talking about the DC releases uh, promo from February 1986. Of course. The first appearance of Booster Gold. It's official. It is his first appearance in printed form. Came out a month before the actual comic book that he was out in. It's like a flyer. Counts. It I counts. think that counts. You know what's interesting is that it counts. And on eBay, you can find this. There's very few of them available. This is something a lot of people don't know. It even says free on the top right-hand corner. This was an advertisement given to stores to just give to right. consumers who largely threw them oh, away. Who takes care of that stuff? You know, the ones that survive, they get listed for over 150 bucks. That's more money than like a low-grade full run of Booster Gold. They gave it out for free. And they gave it out for free. Now, that's a promo flyer. Let's talk about some other promotional items that have some key appearances. Maybe Booster Gold doesn't do it for you. Let's talk about Venom. Okay. We've discussed the first appearance of Venom and the controversy here. Or Are you at least thinking the, about the song again? <laughs> Venom, Venom, Venom. I'm thinking about the song again. It always like, comes back to Eminem, dude. For like uh, the next week, anytime I hear Venom, it's going to be the song. <laughs> they ain't gonna know what hit em. That's unfortunate. All right. ASM 300, right? right? First full appearance of Venom. But of course. he's got a full page spread in 299. Right. Okay. Classic. That's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's a classic appearance. It's no big deal. But... Let's talk about some earlier appearances of Venom. What? Earlier appearances? What? What? Yes, there are earlier appearances. Um, and let's actually talk about months and dates here because these things are important. So ASM 300 was released in May 1988. Then we have ASM 299 in April 1988. Okay. You know, it's a month before. Makes sense, right? Well, a month before that, in March 1988, you have Comic Scene Issue Number 2. This is a magazine. has a release date of March 1988. And this inside has previews of 
Spider-Man showing Venom, this new character. This one is something special, too, because it's not just a preview that shows you what the cover is going to look like in a tiny little black and white picture down in the corner. It's got, like, Eddie Brock, like, full Venom with the, you know, the face of Eddie on there. Like, the mask is off. But the suit of Venom and everything, right? yeah, the it's, symbol mm-hmm. and all. It's not just a tiny little shadowy picture. It's kind of like a, almost like a character breakdown introduction of Venom. So it's it's pretty thorough. It's thorough, and it's one that, as a real first, has been known in the community for quite some time. If you go on eBay, you're going to see, you know, a handful of copies listed and they're all listed above a hundred bucks. I mean, they do sell for over 150 and especially those higher grade copies because magazines are oversized. They're harder to keep, you know, clean. And who has magazine size bags and boards just laying around? Exactly. It's kind of that Batman damn situation, only worse because this was like a throwaway magazine, wasn't a prestige comic book. Right. So this is listed you know, in the comic book collector's community as the first, like, real appearance of Venom. But you can go back even further. How far back can you go? You can go back to December 1987, a full four months prior to that, to Amazing Heroes issue number 131. This is another advertisement within a comic publication soliciting up-and-coming comic sales potential comics you can buy and in this preview a full six months or so prior to spider-man 300 you have a shot of venom that's it that's pretty clear cut and that's so much earlier too now i want to point the community's attention to this picture of comic reader issue 100 this is another one of those comic promotional items this is something that came out in 1973 and this right here I have to give a huge thank you to Octavia, one of our writers, for finding this. This isn't the only one on this list, actually, that has been uncovered by Octavio. He's a writer on the ComicTom101.com slash blog, and he actually uncovered a bunch of these. And this one right here from 1973 may be the first time we see a Marvel-DC crossover. I mean, this is early as hell, but this wraparound cover doesn't just have Superman and Shazam on the front. But on the back features Batman and a very patriotic hero drawn by Jack Kirby. Captain America, Marvel and DC right there. So unless there is an earlier one in Comic Fam, please, any of these types of things, like really, it's a can of worms. When we start looking at these real first appearances, Ryan, what typically happens? Someone knows something that happened earlier than that. There's another publication. Exactly. Something comes out of the woodwork. I mean, we went down the Harley Quinn, like cave of just just endless shadows crooks and crannies and we kept uncovering stuff over and over again it's definitely a rabbit hole situation you start and it just keeps going and going and so going. If, if you know any of these real first appearances to have other real first appearances let us know in the comment section below but this one from 1973 i mean that's early marvel like the earliest crossover between the companies i know of offhand is the one from the 80s right the jla avengers that happened in the 80s i believe right and this is a promotional item so this may have been licensed or unlicensed i'm not entirely sure i'm interested to pick up a copy to get a closer look at this thing yeah i feel it feels less at least less promoted than the uh than the other ones i was thinking of so now we have some other just kind of filler ads you know comics advertise for other comics similar to the Hulk 181 ads we discussed earlier in the show. Right here we have ads for Avengers number one. The first one in Strange Tales issue number 112. That'd be so cool to go back and you're just reading that comic and you see an ad for something that's so important right before it even became a thing. Just an ad for you know some random comic that's not even, you know, hopefully people read this uh, Avengers comic that we're thinking of putting out soon. Yeah, hopefully it sells well. Yeah. Got a guy named Jack Kirby doing the, the cover. Yeah, the, uh, the time interior. capsule aspect of, of comic books. That's something I love is seeing all the old ads in there. Not only for, for Sea Monkeys and Hostess Snack Cakes, but seeing up ads for upcoming comics that aren't out yet. That's pretty exciting. Fantastic Four issue number 18, which is the first appearance of Super Scroll, mm. also has an Avengers 1 ad as well. Win-win. But what's interesting here is like, FF18, of course, as a key book, is looked at as that you know key moment for the Super Scroll appearance. But that Strange Tales 112, there really isn't much going on in that book. I mean, it's cool Silver Age, but that Avengers 1 ad, that really takes the cake for big appearances in that book. 
That's the best thing about Strange Tales is the is the Avengers ad in that one single issue. It's what gets put on listings a, a bit more than just like the standard publication information. Yeah. Now, we are bringing this up today because Octavio found a really cool one and one that got me excited so much that I had to go out and purchase it because I had to see it in person. Stuff. So I started out with the Hulk 180, 181 timeline. And this is important because we're going to break from this to go to a, like a little rant because I just, I got to do it. I got to uh-huh. do it because it's just confusing to me. And I think it's freaking hilarious. So Hulk 180, cameo of Wolverine, right? Uh-oh. Hulk 181, first appearance of Wolverine. Here we go. Hulk 182, second, third, or second cameo full appearance. I'm already confused. And this isn't me, dude. This is like what's on CGC labels. Because if you look at Giant Size X-Men number one, which came out the following year in summer 1975 on the label, it says this is Wolverine's second Full appearance. Now, if we go by facts, does this character appear in the comic book at all? Like, can you see this character at all? Anything. He's in Hulk 180. He's in Hulk 181. He's in Hulk 182. And he's in Giant Size X-Men number one. But only two of those count. And this is awfully close to flipping off the community, but I'm going to keep it going. Two. Two different appearances. What's happening? I don't know. It seems to me like there's four right there. You, just, it, you had four fingers up, and but only only two of them seem to count. Well, it's because the appearance in 180 and 182 are all but thrown away as it pertains to full versus cameo appearances. But we're talking about advertisements for a reason, and Octavio brought the heat. He found one that is gone missed by so many collectors, and I'm excited to report on it today. We have... Comic Reader Issue 117. Take a look at this, Ryan. And what does that say on the front? It looks to me like it says April 1975. July is typically what's listed as the date that Giant Size came out, even if we were to be conservative and say, hey, some stores got it one or even two months before that. This Comic Reader from 1975 has a half-page spread advertisement of Giant Size X-Men number one. Sure does. I saw it myself. That's right. We have a... Okay, at this point, we can say the first appearance of Giant Size, which is the new team, right? Because this is predating Giant Size X-Men. But we can also look at this as the potential real first appearance of the second full appearance of Wolverine (sighs) or the third unofficial first appearance of Wolverine. But it doesn't matter because really... It doesn't matter. If you like Logan and you like Wolverine and you like Chris Claremont and you like New X-Men, this is something that you're going to be interested in. And that's all that matters. Indeed. What do you think about all this, Ryan? This is crazy stuff. This is crazy stuff. How does, it, how does it feel that like, this kind of stuff keeps coming out? That's the thing about rabbit holes, man. You start digging and it just keeps going and you don't realize how far down the rabbit hole really goes. I want to know from the community, is this crazy? Is it crazy to look at appearances and advertisements and and promotional items as key appearances? It's a little crazy, but I don't think it's not interesting. I don't think it's not relevant. It makes sense to me. Yeah. You know, I've gone on record. We got over 400 videos on this channel. I've said it multiple times, dude. I've spent stupid money on Hellboy stuff. Yes. Promotional Hellboy items because I'm a Hellboy collector. And I was a purist, man. I was a diehard. I wanted not just the 9.8. I wanted the 9.9 copy. Like I wanted to have the lowest census count for promotional, what have you. I want a raw copy. I want a signed copy. I want a yellow label copy. I wanted it all. When I was deep into it, I really wanted to have the best collection that I could be proud of, display it, and however I wanted to display it because that changed all the time. That's what I wanted. So I look at something like this and go, you know what? Who am I to say as someone who is interested in a freaking modern character? Like, I'm interested in a modern character. What's wrong with modern, Tom? There's nothing wrong with it. That's right. There's nothing wrong with modern comics. There is nothing wrong with modern comics. But as a collector, most people just like, oh, you're talking about something modern? That's gone to me. Yes. Like You're either collecting silver or gold, or I don't even want to think about it. But I can relate. I can relate to all the collectors because Hellboy's my thing. And I put those filters on, and I'm okay with it. So, I want to hear what the community thinks. 
these promotional items. Do you dig them? Because there's an awesome category on our sponsors app, Key Collector Comics. You got to go through this category. This category is the character preview category on Key Collector on the app. You, it shows you a big list of all these different characters and, and some comic series, it looks like. It shows you not the first appearance of them in comics, but the first in advertisement appearance of them in comics like we've just been discussing here. And there's like over 50 of them and counting. It's a big list. Yeah. So one to have fun going through and see if you can find some of these on the hunt because these largely go missed. And I can tell you, this comic reader surprised a lot of people that I showed. Like A lot of dealers don't know about this thing. It looks cool to me because it looks like Green Lantern riding a horse, but that's... He kind of does look like Green Lantern, doesn't he? Yeah. 